especially we in the community, that is in the Comfort community. So many great things God has packaged for us, God has planned for us, and I, I want us to like to key into it. Um, great is going to be our exploits in Jesus' name. Yeah, so before we commence, before we go uh, commence our Comfort series for this um, very month, 20, uh, very month of February, I would just want us to have um, just a few minutes of prayers. Let's open our mouth and thank, let's thank, just thank God for allowing us to be a particular, the Comfort series for this, for this very month of February. God has in time past, he has, he has used this Comfort um, series to be a blessing, channel of blessing for every one of us, for each of us. Amen. Let's open our mouth and thank the name of the Lord. Let's worship him because um, uh, he deserves to be praised. He deserves to be worshipped. Let's thank him because he has, he has packaged something wonderful for us this very month. Let's open our mouth and glorify his name for that. Um, let's adore his name because our God is good, is wonderful, is worthy to be praised. Let's thank him. In Jesus' mighty name, we've prayed. Amen. Our Father, in heaven, we thank you for a wonderful privilege you've granted unto us to be alive. We thank you for the privilege you've given us to be partakers of the Comfort series, the first for the year 2023. Lord, we are praying that as we are about to commence. The series for this month, we pray that you take absolute control, Lord, in Jesus' name. We pray that Amen. the speaker and every section of the program, you use it as a channel of blessing for every one of us, Lord, in Jesus' name. And all that you have in store for us this very year, 2023, great will be our exploit in Jesus' name. In Jesus' Amen. mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, I want I welcome us again for our comfort um, monthly series. Um, basically, uh, I will want to introduce what comfort is for those that are joining us for the very first time. Com comfort is short for Conference of Faithful Ambassadors. So basically, it's a community of um, of young people, young professionals that are passionate about development in our present world, as well as also they are passionate about God, not just passionate about development, they're also passionate about God as well, because for we to thrive in our present world, for we to develop in this very world, we need the God factor. So Comfort is a community of young and passionate young professionals that are passionate, as I said, uh, towards development in our present world. So every month, every year rather, we usually have a, the Comfort Conference. And last year, for a series of years, I've been having the conference. And last year, we had the Comfort 13 in Lagos. And we also had, the, uh, for the first time, we had one last uh, outside Lagos, happened in Abuja. And it was really a, a great conference, a gathering of young people where we, we learned a lot, where we were catapulted for greatness, where we were we, we are, <clears throat> we are provided with tools, we were provided with insights that we need to, um, to develop or to go out in our, in our world or in our community and achieve great exploits. So every month, We'll be having our comfort series um, for this. Um, this comfort uh, for February is the first to be having for the year 2023, and I'm sure as we we have it in our, I believe every one of us that joined, um, we we know the title of our series for this month, and is titled rising to lead so the first comfort series for 2023 is titled 
rising to lead. But before we go deep down, just um, want I would just want us to, um, for those that are joining us now, those that joined us now, I want us to just um, just um, type the name and location you are joining us from, so that we will be, uh, yeah, so that we'll be able to know where you are joining us from. Just in the chat, in the chat underneath, you will see it down. Just please type your name and the location you are joining us from, yeah, as a form of introduction, yeah. The name, your name, and the location you are joining us from. So, as a form of introduction as well, uh, my name is Julius Julius Olajumokian. I'm a software developer, and I'm passionate about uh, development across Africa. I'm passionate about development across Africa, and I reside in in Lagos, Nigeria. Yeah, so you can as well introduce yourself. What's your name, your location, uh, your location where you are connecting from, uh, and also also background information about yourself, to, also a short introduction about yourself, so, so that we can connect. So that is the main purpose about this community. As I said, we are passionate young people, uh, passionate young people, uh, and. As passionate young people want to network among ourselves, uh, want to know ourselves better so that uh, we don't know, we may, uh, the person to come up with the next big thing in our community, in our society to solve societal problems can be in this chat, can be in this community. So we just want to network. So just basically just share your name, the location you are joining us from. Yeah, I can see. Yeah, I can see Raymond. I can see people on this call. So, okay, yeah, we have 11. So, please, um, I'll be calling names now. So, you just uh, introduce yourself and uh, let us know you better. Yeah, I can see Joy, Ma Joy Ma Matthew. So, I don't know. Um, Joy, can you introduce yourself so that I'll meet you and know you better? Yeah, I can see a building from Lagos. Yeah, I can see Pel Pelumi on the call. I can see John Omotola on the call. Yes, thank you for joining us. Yeah, so I don't know. Um, <clears throat> I want to like give like two two people the privilege to introduce themselves to to the community, the comfort community. Yeah, so I want to give them. Um, John and uh, gifts the privilege to introduce themselves to the community. Yeah. So I will unmute your mic. I'll give it to um, John and I can see I see, okay, I, okay, I can see Joy. I want gifts to it to so three people, just short and brief, just introduce yourself to the community. So I'll go to John. Yeah. So I've, I've tried to, I'm trying to unmute your mic so that you just, we just hear your voice as you know. Uh, yeah, so. Uh, good morning. Yeah. yeah, good morning. Yeah, my name is John and I'm joining you from Lagos. Yeah. Short introduction about yourself, John, so that okay, the community okay. members can know you. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. Uh, my name is John once again, like I said earlier. I'm joining you from Lagos. I'm a software developer. I work with a software development company here in Lagos. And we provide service for financial institution um, in Lagos and then looking forward uh, and outside Africa and rather and outside Nigeria and rather. So basically African countries. I'm also into sales of cars. <laughs> Looking forward to getting the very best for this conference. Thank you very much. Mm 
I lost, exactly. yeah, I, like, I, I was out of the meeting, my network, so I, I don't know. Um, can I give also another person the privilege? Uh, Joy Marty, please, can you introduce yourself to the community so that we know your name, where you are joining us from, and it does a bit brief introduction about yourself. Yeah. Thank you. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is um, Joy Matthew. I'm joining in from Lagos State. I am a media personality and I work as a producer in Plus TV Africa. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much, Joy, for joining us. Uh, we want to be like, uh, because of we have limited time, we will not be giving everyone the privilege to introduce ourselves, but you can just your name, where you are joining us from, and a brief introduction about yourself in the group chat so that we can meet and know you because we want to like foster relationship in our community, the community of faithful ambassadors. We sincerely appreciate that. As I said, we, we, are, we are going to be strict with time. We are going to be time bound. We're not going to take much of your time. So um, as I said earlier, the theme for our Confab series for this month of February is rising to late and you have our guest speaker that is going to be taking the section he's going to be walking us through uh, he's a seasoned leader if there's anyone that uh, is to talk about leading if there's anyone that should should talk about what it takes to rise and to lead uh, is no other person than our speaker for today uh, his story is inspirational his story shows what it means for someone to rise from uh, from humble beginning to the top of leadership, and he has exemplified that as 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 a professional. He has exemplified that as a Christian as well. He has exemplified that in every area of his life, and he is no other person than our convener. Um, Mr. Koyejo Luwatusin. Uh, but before I give him the floor, I would just want to quickly just give a short introduction about uh, Mr. Koyejo Luwatusin for those that um, may not really know him. I would just want to give us a background view of who our speaker is today, as well as uh, who our convener, the convener of the Comfab. I want to just give a short background overview about him so that we we'll, we'll get to uh, know know him and get to yeah basically to know who our speaker for today is so permit me yeah so but mr koyo uluwatosi permit me to read this bio so that we will all understand him better so mr uluwa entrepreneur with a strong passion for creative excellence he is the founder and the chief executive officer of the Chronicle Software Development Company Limited in Lagos, Nigeria. He founded the company while in, the, in his final year in university on the 27th of September 2007. He went from zero to emerge as one of the top 50 emerging businesses in Nigeria by Diamond Bank in its Bet Theory program in 2013. It says with over 1.2 million users in inception in about 40 countries and in four continents. Chronicles is fast becoming a global company and its goal of becoming African finance solution company very much on track. Our convener and our speaker for today studied computer science 
I was a pioneer president of Programmers Group at the University of Adoikiti in Lagos, Adoikiti, Nigeria. He's an IT professional with over 20 years experience in developing many cutting edge solutions for schools and large organizations. His company, um, that is Chronicle Software Development Company, has developed many enterprise applications for top banks and financial institutions in Nigeria. Our convener and speaker, Koijo, has developed many commercially viable solutions. We include the success, the success box, the daily manner for mobile, the universal test engine, So our convener developed a digital learning device to one, was given the educational recently on the 10th August 2021 in partnership with Lagos State Government. His company launched the largest digital classroom in Africa. Our convener and speaker for our conference for this month is an alumnus of Enterprise Business Center a sister institution of the, Lagos, of the Lagos Business School, an association, leadership academy, and the Faith Foundation. In 2013, in 2020, in 2013 rather, our speaker was appointed a member of the Human Capital Development Commission of the Nigeria Economic Summit Group is the convener, as I said earlier, is the convener of our CONFAP, an annual conference of young professionals and students, which aims at empowering youth to take the lead and excel in their chosen field. So I have the singular honor to welcome our speaker and our convener, Mr. Uluwa Koijoluwa Stosin, for our confab series rising to lead for this month of February. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very much, Julius, and um, good morning to everyone. I, I'm, I'm sure you can all hear me. Yes, good morning to everybody. If you can hear me, can you just um, uh, unmute your mic and just say good morning so that I know that um, my audience can hear me. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, good morning, good morning sir. Oh, great, great, great. Great to see everybody. Great to have everyone on this call. And I, I trust and I hope that um, we're going to have an exciting session together. So let's jump right into what we are, we are here to do. Uh, so we're talking about the, the CONFAB series for 2023, 20, uh, February 2023. Uh, let's remind ourselves that um, there is need to constantly remind ourselves about what we need to do to be able to get to the topmost stop. We have a God that... Um, desires for us to reach the very summit of our various uh, careers and the various summit of our various field. Uh, in fact, the scripture says that we are the city that we are set on the hill, we cannot be hid. So that's your, you know, that's your inheritance and that's my inheritance. So if we, if we look at rising to lead today, it has a short, um, well, I say rider, and the rider is building capacity and essential skills for leading in today's world. So what are those essential skills that we need to you know, strengthen, that we need to build so that we can take leadership and we can uh, lead into this world? So that's exactly what we're talking about today. And I'm going to start by deep diving into what, what does it take to mean, what does it mean when we say build capacity? What does capacity mean? But what does what what does capacity building mean? So to build capacity is the process of developing and strengthening skills, instincts, abilities, processes, resources that individuals and organizations need to adapt, thrive, and lead in a fast changing world. So that's exactly what it means to build capacity. Now, to build capacity, we're not trying to be academic, but it's good for us to just get the background. Now, 
the process of developing and strengthening your skill, that's capacity building. The process of defining and strengthening your instincts, that's capacity building. The process of developing and strengthening your abilities, that's capacity building. The process of defining and strengthening processes that enables you to thrive in today's world, that's capacity building. So we need to understand all of this as we want to get, you know, nose diving into the study. And we find out that the world is changing very fast. And so therefore, there is need for us to be able to build capacity that will enable us to be relevant in, in our world today. And let me start by introducing us to what are the five essential, you know, skills that we need for leading today. Essential skills for leading today. You know, there are, there are different kinds of skills, but I have, I group them into five broad categories. So as a young person or as a young professional, what are those skill sets? What are those skills that you need that will give you leadership into this world? The first one is your technical skill. And the second one, you need digital skills. We are in the digital age. You need to be able to amass a master foundational digital skills that will really prepare your career and prepare your, you know, you to the next level. Then we need another very, very important skill that we call deep, deep thinking skills. Now, a lot of people don't think really deep. A lot of people are shallow thinkers. A lot of people don't try to, you know, rack their imaginations. They don't like to tap into their creative geniuses. And that's why you see a lot of commentators, a lot of complainers, because nobody tries to think deep. So one very important skill that we need to be able to, you know, make the most and lead into this world, deep thinking skills. And people that think really deep, they create amazing solutions and the world goes to celebrate them. Now, the fourth on my list is business skills. Now, to survive into this world, you need to be out there. Whether you're enabling an existing business or you are, you know, pioneering a business, Business skills will never, never be antiquated. Will never, never be obsolete. Business skills remain relevant in time and will transcend generations. Then finally, relationship skills. Relationship skills. Now, relationship skills, I don't mean relationship between husband and wife. No, no, no. I mean relationship where you can relate with people properly, where you can keep long-term relationships that you can convert into fantastic assets in the years to come. Now, these five broad skills is where we're going to anchor our conversations this afternoon, this, this morning. And let's not remember, we're talking about rising to lead. So in, in order to rise to lead, we need, we need technical capabilities, the technical skills. We need to be able to, you know, uh, acquire and master digital skills. Then we need to, uh, you, you know, deep dive, have some very strong, you know, deep thinking skills. Then we need to have uh, develop a business capability, those business skills, business development skills. Then finally, our relational skills, or what I call relationship skills, have to be really top notch for us to be able to see uh, the kind of um, uh, you know growth pattern and the kind of leadership core that we desire for ourselves. So all of these things gives us a clear picture, gives us a deep understanding of what we need to do and how we need to go from where we are. So ask yourself as we, as we begin the conversation, what kind of skills do I have currently? I mean, how, how good is my technical skill? You know, do I have any data skills to be able to, you know, make the most of my engagement in, in, into, this, into this world? And um, do I think deep? And what kind of, what business skills do I have? And how, how good is my interpersonal relationship with people? Now, these particular skills are important. Then don't forget that, in building capacity, it talks about developing the skills and abilities. So how do you develop your technical capabilities? How do you develop your, uh, your digital capabilities? How do you develop deep thinking capability? How do you develop and strengthen your business skills? How do you develop and strengthen your relational skills? Now, when you do all of these things, what has happened is that you're developing yourself and that development will continue to end you and lead you and put you in a place where you can lead, you can transform and influence your community and your society for good. Now, having said this, this um, 
um, having set all of this um, uh, uh, um, sequence in motion, we need to understand a deep dive. Now, what, what are those technical skills? So the skill sets you learn and master in line with your core potentials, your core giftings and your talents. Now, those are your technical skills. Now, the first thing to ask yourself, people go into a career, they go into a field, that's, that's fantastic. But you have a responsibility that we've said over the years, if you've been part of a, a, a compact community, you have a responsibility to first discover that thing that God has put inside you. And they can be summarized in your talent, your giftings, and your, um, and your potentials. Now, when you have understood those things, then you can start building skill set that helps your potentials and your giftings to come alive. So even if you have not discovered all of those things, well, that's still not going to put you on the back seat. Now, technical skills can also be developed along the trade that you have chosen, your discipline or your career. So it's either you are building technical cap capabilities along the lines of your giftings, your, poten your potentials or your abilities, or you're building technical capabilities in line with your trade, your discipline, or, or, or career, that is still building technical capabilities. Now, and so for instance, if you're a medical doctor, now that is a career. Now you're not building technical skills to be able to enhance your career, that's building technical capability. Oh, you are a programmer, you are a developer, now that is a career. Now you're not building some, some very core skills to give your programming, to give your development skills uh, a lot of boosts. For instance, from, from, from front-end development, you're going to back-end development, from back-end, you're going to um, 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 how to uh, how to use Web3, from Web3, you're saying, okay, how well can I do with machine learning and AI? So what you're doing is that you're building your technical capability. Oh, I'm a writer, I do content writing. Now, you, you, you're trying to, you know, you know, use blogs, see how you can use, you know, the right articles consistently, how you can, you know, develop. So those are technical skills. Now, technical skills, like I mentioned, these are skill set that you build in line with your core gifting, your core talent, or your potentials, or skill set that you build in line with your trade or discipline or career. Your technical skills, they can be learned, they can be taught, or they can be gotten by observation in either a formal or an informal manner. So let's go to digital skills. Now to succeed in today's world, and today's world you know is a digital age, we need to arm ourselves with the right digital skills. And that's very important. Now, before we came here, we had what we called the information age. Before the information age, we had the jet age. Before the jet age, we had the industrial age. Before the industrial age, we had the you know different ages that come to come. Now in today's world, we have the we have the digital age. Before now, we had the information age. The information age was the best of the internet and everybody was like, this is amazing. You send the chats to somebody and somebody replies to you immediately and the world is just going gaga. You send an email, somebody reads the email and replies to you, everybody say, wow, this is, this is new, this is, this is fantastic. But today, email is just like one of those things. You know, the world has moved very sharply. We're now in the digital age, we are talking about artificial intelligence, we are talking about um, robots doing um, surgical operation. We are talking about the age whereby, you know, uh, we, we, uh, we are seeing the rise of big data and we are seeing a, a whole lot of possibilities ha happen. We are seeing the days whereby your, comp your, your phone is far, far stronger in processing power than the laptops that we use those days. I remember when I was in university, I used to pride myself that I had a Pentium 4 system. A Pentium 4 system, I mean, I did computer science. Uh, I don't know if anybody can remember uh, um, um, a Pentium 4 system here. And if you had a Pentium 4 system, those days in school, is as if uh, you are the chief kingpin in your school. Everybody will want to you sign up. But today, if you give somebody a Pentium 4 system, <laughs> the, the person might not even say thank you to you because the phone in your hand is like 10 or 20 times or 100 times faster in terms of processing speed, in terms of capabilities, than your Pentium 4 system. I, can, I, I mean, my, my Pentium 4 system had a 512 RAM. And this phone I'm holding has 8 gig of RAM. It just tells you, you know, what the data age has brought. A lot of processing speed, a lot of capability, a lot of, you know, uh, 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 power. And so with that said, 
for us to be relevant in today's world, for us to rise and lead effectively, we need to arm ourselves with digital skills. And that's very important. I am not among the school of thought that says everybody has to go and do coding and everybody has to do tech. I don't believe in that. And I don't, I don't preach it. What I preach is everybody has to find their true north, find their talent and build capabilities and build skills in line with their gifting because that's all differentiates you. I can tell you for free that those that are jumping into coding today, they are going to run out tomorrow. Because if it's not your thing, you will not succeed in it. If it's not your thing, you will not, you will not, you, you will not make a headway in it. But if it comes natural to you, fine. And don't forget when I mean digital skills, I don't just mean programming. I'm going to, as we continue, I'm going to list about 15, 11 digital skills that are different from coding that everybody can, can, can use. But you need to find the one that aligns with your person. You need to work, see, find the one that aligns with your, your with, with your natural ability. You need to find the one that aligns with your career that you can give a boost. Now, what data skills do? It helps to flesh in your your uh, and, and, and uh, you know it it, it it helps to sharpen and flesh in, you know your gifts. It helps to boost your potentials. You know it helps to give a lot of life to what you've already started or found to do, and that's that's one very amazing thing you know, that uh, that these data skills can do. So like I said, in data age, we need to arm ourselves with the right skills that can leverage our talents, boost our trade, sharpen our disciplines and add value to our career and dignify our personality as a whole. That's exactly what data skills does. So whether you are in tech or you're transitioning to tech, you need to ask yourself that question. Can this skill I'm going to acquire help leverage my talent? Can this data skill I'm trying to learn or acquire, will it help me? Will it help to boost, you know, the tree? The tree that I have started to learn, will it help to sharpen my discipline, the discipline of different fields I found myself? Will it help to add value in my career or will it help to dignify my personality as a whole? So that's exactly what we know. Now, what are those data skills? So I did a listing of the data skills I have one of them, of course, the most common of them. Let me start with them, uh, with that one. That's coding and programming. Yeah, so you talk about people that are learning how to code, people that are learning how to program and the likes. But are you aware that we are now in the age where they call, have you heard about what they call no-code development? So no-code development uh, is designed for people with no coding skills. And you can build fantastic application without any code. So you heard about things like workflow and bubble, Bubble and workflow, those are the most common local development uh, tools. And people are earning thousands of dollars just understanding how no code works and know how to engage and manipulate no code frameworks. So you not learn syntax, you not let all is, if you have the idea, go onto YouTube, you see no, a lot of no code development platforms. And I can tell you for free, I know somebody in December, uh, she got into a no code, you know, academy. She just paid $50 to learn about no code. <laughs> and she, the individual is taking up a project of about $8,000 just about two weeks after she learned the, the program. So what am I saying? There's a lot of possibilities. It doesn't have to be the people that code. Now there's opportunity for everybody with the no-code development platform. I know developers will not like this, but you know uh, we're trying to democratize development space so everybody can have access to you know translate the ideas into real uh, solutions. Another important digital skill is digital marketing. I cannot overemphasize that. And if you know how to digital, everybody is using a phone. Everybody wants to be online. Everybody is using a, a social media platform or the other. So the need, the you know, the capability to to be able, you know, to sell your idea or your product or a concept to people and get them to buy into it is a very strong skill in today's world. I, I know people that feed extensively on digital marketing. Now today, I mean, this season's elections in Nigeria, you know, the core political parties and frontliner candidates have, you know, they, they brought media people together to help, you know, shaping media narratives to help people buy their personality and help shaping, you know, uh, a, 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 an incentive. That's, whether you like it or not, that's digital marketing. Whether you're selling a product, or you're selling, selling a personality, or you're selling a campaign, that is, and that digital marketing is a very fundamental skill relevant for today's world. Then there's this other one, graphics design and branding. 
that's not going to go away. You build a product today, people want to be able to, you know, you know, uh, uh, you know, design it properly. You want to do a flyer, you want to do a website, you want to see how it looks before you go into production. Then so, so some not so very much emphasized data skills today. One of them is product management. And I think that is beginning to get traction. Now, a product manager's responsibility is to you know, inter, uh, is, is to manage the developers, manage the entire life cycle to ensure that what was this, the originally um, um, uh, conceptualized is exactly what was developed. That's the role of the product manager. I mean, a, a product manager, and he or she, you know, engages the designers, engages the developers, engages the entire team to ensure that exactly what we have conceptualized, ex ex exactly what we have ideated is exactly what we are producing. Very important skill. Then we talked about um, uh, product design. Now, product design, one very sweet skill. A lot of people are beginning to understand that people need to see a visual representation of what the application will look like or the solution will look like before development even starts. And that's where uh, the product design designer comes in. So they have, like, like I told you, there are lots of things that data, a lot of data skills that does not include programming. But you need to ask yourself, which of these skills will boost my potential? Which of these skills will sharpen my discipline? Which of them will add value to my career? And which of them will dignify my personality? I'm not finished. Web design is another one. That's the front-end developers. Then another skill is AI and machine learning. That's another skill set that sells very fast today. So don't look for the one that makes the most amount of money. That is not a very smart way to think. Look for the one that you know brings out the best in you because money will always follow value. And value is very is what people sell. And when it's original to you, you beat the competition. You know, when it's original to you, you're ahead of the pack. When it's original to you, you stay ahead of the call. When it's original to you, you innovate on that space. But you enter a space that is that, that doesn't come to you naturally, you struggle. Even when you have the best skill set, you, you have machine learning, you have this. And people will be asking, are you a techie? Are you, are you into tech? You, you, you start convincing people that you're a tech and you've been in tech for 10 years and all that and all that. And people will be wondering what's going on with you. You need to go for all nine prayers so that we can see, you know, things manifest. It's, 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 it's sometimes it's simply because people find themselves in places they don't need to find themselves. Find all you need to know. Ask yourself is this skill set does it boost my trade? Does it sharpen my discipline? Does it leverage my talent? Does it add value to my career? Does it dignify my presence? Now that's exactly where not asking now tells you where you need to pitch your tent. Now let's continue. Then game development is another very powerful skill. You know, people in, in the back end uh, 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 product development, that's fine. Now this one I'm going to mention is powerful. Today is spreading like wildfire. People that do this, they don't have coding skills at all. That's video content creation. Video content creation is spinning money by the numbers. People put camera in their, in their faces and they consistently make, make uh, skits, videos. They have a lot of viewership and YouTube is paying them in hundreds of thousands of dollars every year. TikTok is paying them on a monthly basis. You know, they have a fan base. Politicians are paying them to do skits. Uh, brands are paying them to do advertisement. You know, a whole lot of things is happening in video content creation space. So it just lets you know that everybody has a footing in tech. Everybody has a space in tech. It doesn't have to be coding. It doesn't have to be programming. You need to find out what really connects to you. Another one is blogging and copywriting. Another one is online community building. Now, online community, is like, of course, you know what uh, um, blogging and copywriting is all about. Now, that's uh, uh, text content creation and the likes. Then another very important data skill today is online community building. If you have the skill sets that help, you know, to go into a space and build a community in record time, that's an amazing skill. People want brand following, people want to build communities, people want to, you know, show leverages and that can go a long way. So with all of these things said, I just itemized some skills to, to be able to make the most of this age, that's data age, you need to be able to amass data skills. And I gave you a, a long list of them. I'm going to, just going to run down through again, coding and programming, digital marketing, graphics design and branding, product management, 
product design, web design, AI and machine learning, game development, video content creation, blogging and copywriting, and um, blogging and copywriting, and um, online community building. So like I said, you look at these things on a, on a consistent basis and ask yourself, which of these skills fits into my overall personality? How will these skills leverage my talent? How will it boost my trade? How will it sharpen my discipline? How will it add value to my career? How will it dignify my person? Now, that's what will aid you in the selection of the skill set that you need to have. Of course, you can have more than one of it. You can stay at one or as a case may be. So let's continue. The thought I talked about five broad skills. I've, I've mentioned about technical skills. I've talked a little bit about um, uh, digital skills. That's what I've finished. The third one is deep thinking skills. The ability to think deep and tap into your creative geniuses and solve real life problems is a gold mine today. This includes critical thinking, creativity and imagination, creative problem solving, big picture thinking, ability to see possibilities in problems. That's exactly what you need to find yourself to do. You need to understand that you know, shallow thinkers, they talk nicely. They talk anyhow. They just say things. But people that think deep, they, they talk less. And it's important. There's a part in scriptures that says that every man should, you know, keep quiet and walk with his hands. So there is wisdom in, you know, you know, keeping quiet and trying to think very creatively. Now, some of these, you know, uh, 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 fundamentals of deep thinking is creative thinking. And how do you how do you engage in creative thinking? You know, uh, uh, your, 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 how do you boost your creativity and imagination? We're going to talk more about that in the next section of this talk. Then creative problem solving. That's another aspect of deep thinking where you use you know, problem solving techniques to be able to solve complex problem. And that's exactly what you need to understand. Then another aspect of, uh, of, of deep thinking is big picture thinking. Now, the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, the same he will be. As you think in your heart, that's exactly how your life will be. So the reason why you're like this is because you have thought about this over and over again. So if you change your thinking, it will influence your thoughts and actions, and it will eventually move your life to the next level. If you think success, if you think you will, if you think, if you think success consistently, and you take steps worthy and required of, uh, of success, eventually you surely will be successful. And now that's how it works. So, but if people consistently think poverty, if they consistently think failure, they consistently think, you know, smallness, they consistently think that they will not be able to do it, that will be exactly their reality. I have this particular saying, and we have told people over and over again, what you see is not real, but what you believe becomes your reality. And that's the truth. So today, you might, you might seem small, but you believe that someday you are going to make it big. Someday you're going to build a big business. Someday you're going to rise to the top of your career. And that's what you believe, you know, you know, affects your worldview, influence your thoughts and actions, influence the kind of friends you keep. Before you know it, what you believe will eventually go and create the reality. And that is it. So today it looks like you may be struggling. It looks like you don't have transport fare. You know, uh, people are saying that they are queuing you know, trying to queue for, for money. You're not even trying to queue anything because, you know, <laughs> there's nothing inside. But you believe beyond all reasonable doubt that one day, you know, you have to distribute in because you have in excess. What you believe will eventually become your reality. So what you are seeing today is not real. I mean, if, we, if I have time, I'll, I'll paint vivid pictures of very, very tough times that we had, financial times that we had, but we never internalized that process. We knew we we're coming out and by the mess of God, we eventually came out. So that scripture that says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. You cannot wish that kind of scripture away. I'm just going to go over the deep thinking skills. Deep thinking skills, the ability to think deep and tap into your creative geniuses and solve real problems is a gold mine to today. Now, Nigeria has some problems, whether complex, whether hydra-headed, or their problems. Now, but Nigeria is in their need of solution providers, people that will not complain about the system, but people that will isolate these problems 
and be able to engage their mind, engage their te technical uh, uh, capabilities, engage with the data skills that they have learned to be able to solve the problems that they see every single day. That will be bring the transformation effect that that you want to see. Now, listen. Now, every skill set we talked about is is interconnected. First and foremost, you arm yourself with a technical skill. Secondly, you 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 acquire a data skill that will amplify your technical skill. Thirdly, you think you engage deep thinking skills to be able to solve problems that you have identified using your technical capabilities and your data skill capabilities. Then the fourth one is your business skill. Now, the ability to transform your creative solutions and ideas into viable businesses that can impact the society for the greater good is an important asset in today's world. So how do I mean? You think about solutions in your mind's eye. Now, those solutions, you create that solution or you conceive that idea. Like for instance, you heard about the electric light bulb. The electric light bulb, the company that created, I mean, the, the man that created the electric light bulb eventually formed a company called General Electric. And that company is still in existence still today. In fact, my friend's, my friend's um, wife works in G, one of their you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, locations in Nigeria. So what am I saying? Somebody used his, he tapped into his creative geniuses and was able to use his technical capability you know, not so much of data skills available then, but what was available then was, you know, um, 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 uh, electronics and was able to develop the electric bulb. But he did not stop there. He was able to patent his idea, commercialize his solution, and today, hundreds or tens of years have passed. And that company he started is still in existence creating value to the world and creating enormous value to its shareholders that have invested into that idea. So your ability to be able to think through on a problem, provide a solution, and you're able to scale that solution into a viable business that's a profitable business. And that business is able to impact the society around it. That skill will forever be an asset across all generations. Now you know that better than I did, I, I just said. And look at the, the people we celebrate today, are people that were able to think very, very uh, deeply and were able to create solutions and were able to impact their world. And you, you see those people around you. In fact, they're even taking on bigger problems. Uh, there's, this, there's this man that we all know called um, uh, the richest man in Africa, in Nigerian, Ali Kodangote. Now he, he, he single-handedly told himself years back, Nigeria used to import cement. Now, where did this start from? He started from selling you no know, commodities. So he told himself, Nigeria, we relied so much on cement, and we had, you know, we had the capabilities to be able to create some very big cement factories. And what he told himself was that he was going to make Nigeria self-sufficient in cement production. And he went all out. He put his money where his, his mouth is. He was able to know it was, he saw a problem. He saw that we were losing money in Forex importing cement. He was able to create a solution, how to build a cement factory, translated that cement factory into a magnificent success story, and was able to scale that solution across all other African countries. And by so doing, he earned himself the richest man in Africa. Now, I think that was not enough. After the petroleum subsidy in 2012, Nigeria began to import petrol. And everybody's screaming today that we should stop subsidy because in our budget, 2 trillion naira is a mark to pay, you know, for petroleum subsidy. While we have less than 450 billion to do capital projects. That is not how a, a, what a country should, should operate. Now, as far back as six, seven years ago, he conceived the fact that we have a, the population of over 200 million people. We can build a private refinery 
the largest in sub-Saharan Africa that can ship out 650,000 liters of, no, barrels, not liters, barrels of, of petrol every single day. And the Dangote refinery vision was born. So I'm just telling you, everyone on this call, we need to stretch our minds. The capability to transform our ideas or the solutions we have thought through into business is a very viable asset that the country needs. And a big problem in our nation today is youth unemployment. If everybody on this call, you know, taps into their, you know, strength and either create a company or, you know, join with somebody running one company or work aggressively in a company so that the company is so profitable and we can take a lot of young people out of the streets, we are solving a very strong societal problem and we are contributing aggressively to nation building. So let me move on. The skill that's on, still on that business skill, the skill to help boost sales. So apart from building a business from scratch, the skill to help boost sales and increase revenue of any organization will continually remain a relevant skill across generations. So if you're not wired as a starter or as a pioneer, but you have the talent to be able to sell, you know, sand in the Sahara Desert, you have the capacity to sell pure water inside the Atlantic Ocean. You have the capability to convince people to put down their money in exchange of goods and services. What you have, what you have is a treasure that will never be extinct in all generations. So with that said, the business skill can be acquired by seeking relevant training, mentorship, reading biographies of successful entrepreneurs, and commitment to lifelong learning. So you ask yourself, how do I acquire this skill? The first thing you want to do is you want to seek relevant training. The second thing is I want to, you know, go for mentorship, people that are successful in that area. The third thing you want to do is want to um, read, you know, a, a, a biography of successful people. And most importantly, you commit to lifelong learning. Finally, the relationship skills. Now, this is the most you know, this is one of the most successful life-changing skills of the 21st century. Relational skills or relationship skills are very, very important. Now, how do I mean? This includes effective communication. It's part of relationship skills. It's part of relational skills. For you to be able to cast a vision, lead people effectively, you must communicate very well. Now, it also includes interpersonal skills, skills You'll be able to work with people without friction. Be able to work with people without, you know, uh, you know, uh, making sure that everybody is properly is treated properly and treated very well. Now that is another aspect of relational skill. Then also teamwork and collaboration skills. Work with people effectively. Then negotiation skill. That is very very important. Although it's a business skill, but it's also a relational skill. Then networking skills. Very, very important. I didn't understand the value of networking skills until I, I, I much advanced, you know, much in, in business. I found out that that's one very important skill that you need to be able to build big businesses and be able to, you know, network across the board. Um, you should be able to start conversations with high network people and hold them spellbound. And those people, you only have minimum 30 seconds or one minute. You know, if a, a, a governor comes your way, can you walk up to a governor and sell yourself to a governor in 30 seconds and one minute and governor say, take my card, give me a call, send me an email and let's take this conversation to the next level. That is what, that's high level networking skills. The another skill that you need is keeping and engaging high valued contact for the long term. That's very important. You be, as, as you grow up in your, in your work, as you grow up in your, um, in, in, in your service, as you go up in your career, you must be able to keep and engage high value contacts for the long term. Now, these are some of the principles that we need to rise to lead. Rising to lead, building capabilities, you know, for leading in today's world. Now, to wrap it up, how do we build capacity across these categories? I mentioned five broad categories, your technical skills, your, um, your digital skills, your deep thinking skills, your business skills and your relational skills. So, how do you now build capacity across these, you know, uh, 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 broad, you know, skill uh, uh, um, um, category areas? 
how do you not build capacity? Now for technical skills, to build capacity, number one, you have to acquire formal training. Number two, you need to register for relevant courses. Number three, seek expert apprenticeship when necessary. And number four, invest in relevant literature and books, very important. That's how to build capacity technically. If I jump to data skills, how do I, how do I master data skills? What should I do? Number one, select a data skill to learn and to master. That's the first thing you need to do. I listed, give you a list about 11 to 12 days. So by so doing, you select the data Hello, can you hear me? Sorry, um, back up. I was temporarily disconnected. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, can you hear me now? Yes, sir, we can hear you, sir. All right, thank you very much. So second thing you need to do is acquire training from established centers or established providers. So I've acquired the data skill that I want to learn, acquire training, then online courses and online videos would do a whole lot. Everything you need to acquire, everything you need to learn available in the cloud, available on YouTube, available on videos, and surprisingly, all these things are free. Then one-on-one uh, -on -one training from a pro is also a plus. So you get somewhere that is good in that area, you sit down with him, you cut him, you pay him some money, and it takes you through the process, and that could be a way to be able to leapfrog. Attending boot camps, hackathon can make a huge difference. That's how to build capacity, uh, digital skill capability. Then deep thinking skills. What do I need to do? Number one, you need to read wide and you need to read vast. Number two, create meditation times daily where you can meditate. Don't just walk, 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 run around. Create times where you can you know, meditate, where you can look at things from all facets, look at solutions. Then also engage problems using, uh, uh, engage problem solving techniques. Now, if you go online and ask what type, what are the techniques for solving complex problems? You'll be very shocked that there's actually a lot of research that has been done on how you can engage you know, problem solving techniques. That's very, very important. Then reading inspirational books. When you read inspirational books, it gives you a whole lot of understanding. It helps you to think deep. It gives you a, a, a different facet and that can go a long way. Now your business skills. What do I do to build business capabilities? Attend, attend a business school or entrepreneurship development school. That's number one. Take courses on relevant business skills that you need. Number three, get a business mentor or a coach. Number four, read biographies of successful business leaders. Number five, list business role models that inspire you and begin to digest all their content and resources online and follow them on relevant social media platforms. I cannot over, overstate this. So you want to build business uh, skills. What you need to do, take time out, attend a business school or entrepreneurship school, you know, take a course on relevant you know, business uh, platforms, a whole lot. There's Harvard Business School. They have free resources on Udemy. There are business courses that you can take a few dollars and you'll be good. Then also get a business coach. That's one thing that helped me in my business journey. I have a business coach that I've been concerned with the past 16 years. And thankfully, whenever I want to see him, he gives me audience and, you know, and I, I, I have been privileged to have, you know, multiples of these coaches and, um, you know, mentors around my way. It goes a long way to help you build business capabilities. And also, like I said, you list role models that inspire you. Now, a mentor and a role model are two different things. Your mentor is somebody that you can have access to and he can give you coaching when necessary or can lead you and guide you the way. They say a mentor is somebody that knows the way and is ready to show you how to get there. Now, a role model is somebody that is far away, but you are, that, that you admire. Bill Gates is one of my role models. I've been following him since, you know, 2005, there about. I remember those days where there were no, I mean, there were no affordable internet everywhere. I was an undergraduate student in 200 level. I was going to a cyber cafe. There was a website called Bill Gates Speeches. 
So I'll go there and I'll download all Bill Gates speeches into a flash drive. I'll get back to my Pentium 4 system and start reading those speeches. Anywhere Bill Gates goes, I just kept following him. Every book he buys, every, every book he writes, I buy them. He has written three books, Road Ahead in 1995. Um, uh, he wrote uh, business, at, business at the Speed of Thought in, 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 in early 2000. And of recent, he just wrote a book about climate change. That's the only one I've, I've not bought. Now, then you follow them. Of recent, I begin to have a liking for Elon Musk. I like, I like his audaciousness. I like his capability to, you know, to do big things. And I have been you know, following him. And a whole lot of people, I, I like Aliko Dangote so much. I like you know, people, successful people. And the, the, another remarkable business person in Nigeria I like so much is Aiko Mokwede. Anything Aiko Mokwede is doing right now, I am there. He started a program, a, 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 a platform. I made sure I, I, was, I was there at, this, at, at the first anniversary. You know, anything about Aikimokwede turns me on. If I see him on TV, I'm there. Of recent now, as I watching Aikimokwede's videos on YouTube, virtually everything he has done. So if you ask me who is Aikimokwede, Aikimokwede is that man that found, that transformed Zenith Bank, I mean, uh, Access Bank into what it is today. So let me continue. Read business focus magazines, e.g. example, Forbes, African Business Reports, it goes a long way. Then also, what you also need to do is attend business seminars and conferences. Very, very important. Then join relevant business communities and associations. If you do that, you build business capacities, you grow your strength, and become a leader in that field. Finally, uh, relationship skills. To build relationship, relational capabilities, you need to read books on public speaking and books on effective communication. Work with teams effectively and winning people. So those are kind of literature you have in your, in your library. Books on public speaking, books on effective communication, books on working with teams and winning with people. Then also read content about different personality types and how to work with them effectively. That's also very important. Some people don't know how to work with um, pe people that are sanguine in nature. Some do not know how to work with people that are choleric in nature. But you need to have those kind, kind of books and know exactly where people's strength lie. Attend personal development seminars. They go a long way. Watch relevant video resources on emotional intelligence and developing empathy. And this will help you, you know, understand the depth. And, and of course, go for high-profile events. There's this meeting I go for every year. It cost me 150,000 naira. And in that meeting, you meet with governors, we meet with presidents. And it's just a two-day program. And the kind of capability of people I've met in that meeting, and it happens in Abuja every year. And that is just to tell you, and you know, there's a business school I attended for three weeks. It cost me half a million. You know, so and in that my class, I met a, I met a billionaire that makes over 22 billion in revenue. She's she's not my friend. I call her, I chat her, we talk, I go to her office. You know, it builds your network of, 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 of friends. Uh, today, you know, by the message of God, we have you know chat with CEOs of banks and the likes. No, that's exactly what happens when you build your relationship skills. You go for high-profile seminars, you join you know top top-notch business communities. Before you know it, all these businessmen you are trying to see in their office, they won't give you an appointment in their office. But in the conferences, you see them, you shake their hands, you get their cards, and they can even invite you for lunch. That is one of these um, high network groups I met. Uh, who is uh, um, my chairman today, Felicia Phillips. And he's been an amazing father to us in our company. So finally, I've said five things. I've given you areas of build capacity are, are around them. I've talked about your technical skills. I've talked about your uh, digital skills. I've talked about the, your uh, deep thinking skills. I also moved into business skills. And I also mentioned about the final broad skill, which is your relational skill. Well, I'm going to draw the curtain talking about one very important skill. If I don't talk about it, I'll have done you a disservice. And that skill is very critical. I call it the kingdom life skills. What did I say? The kingdom life skill. Now, these skills are life skills for maintaining consistent work with God. And that is amazing. Now, you can have technical skills. You can have business skills. You can have relationship skills. And you still will not make a headway. Now, relationship with God makes all the difference. I, I like the song that says, he lifted the poor from the dust to the throne. He sheltered the orphans. He calls them his own. He lifted, he, he, he said, he, he lifted the blind and he makes them king. He makes the pauper. And, he, you know, he, he turns the pauper and he, and he makes him a king. So that's, that's 
who God is. He's a specialist in turning people's life around. Christ is a specialist in turning people's life around. So your kingdom life skills are one of the most important skills you need to navigate in this world. Then don't forget, the Bible says that the whole world lies in wickedness. Now your kingdom life skills gives you domination, gives you ability to dominate in the world of wickedness, whereby people that mean you evil cannot touch you because the stronger divine one is on your side. Just like they say, the one with God is a, is a majority. I talked about the kingdom life skills. These skills are skills for maintaining a consistent work with God. These skills enable you to be daily guided by the God's word and personally led by his spirit. Our kingdom life begins when we enter into a relationship with Jesus. And that's important. Our relationship, our kingdom life begins when we enter into a very foundational, fundamental relationship with God. And that, that is a world changer. Then how do we build kingdom life capacity? Number one, how do we do that? Daily devotion. Your daily devotion is rock solid. You have a connectivity with God in the place of prayer. God knows you by name. You have you, you, you that, that is a skill for success, for leverage, for leadership in today's world. Then another important way to build kingdom life capability is diligent study of God's word. God gives you revelation, God gives you insight, God gives you direction. You have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with God. That's bigger than any connection. That gives you peace in the in storm. You know, when people are say there's a casting down, you say there's a lifting up, and that's amazing. Number three, you make sure that you make, you make sure you connect yourself with places and with programs that will boost your spiritual growth. Tomorrow, make sure you're in God's presence in a place where not where they are, you know, just psyching you or just they're like whining you as the case may be, but in a place where they are impacting you with God's words. Another thing is listening to spirit-inspired messages, worship. I remember when I was in university, there are some days, those days where we didn't have YouTube. I go into the marketplace and I'll buy a Don Muen uh, K-set, you know. Uh, those of you that, I don't, I, I don't know if some of you still remember those cases that has those white things inside and have those black tapes, you know. So you buy those cassettes, domain cassettes, you buy Bob Fitz cassettes, and inside those cassettes you have, you know, the lyrics of the song. And I remember sometimes I'll shut, you know, my my, my door, hostel, hostel room, and I'll be playing those songs and just reading those lyrics, and the atmosphere of the room just changes. It helps in my bonding, my working relationship with the Almighty. Then, most essentially, love God, obey his words. This will give you edge in time and eternity. By this and more, when you build kingdom life capabilities, when you build kingdom life skills, something happens. You dominate life circumstances and will keep the devil and the courts permanently on their feet. Thank you very much. And, have, and I hope that this particular session has impacted you I want to hand over to our moderator, Julius, standing by. We have listened to um, Rising to Lead, Building Capability uh, for Leading to This World. Make sure you build technical capabilities. Use your data uh, skill sets to, to leverage your technical skills. You know, mind deep thinking uh, 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 um, uh, capacity inside you. Go on to leverage business skills and do more with the relationships that God has put around you. Above all, connect with the Almighty and victory is certain. Thank you very much once again, and God bless you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, for such impactful uh, section. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Yeah, so sir, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Koyejo, for such impactful section. Rising to lead, building capacity for leadership. Uh, it's very, very. The talk was clear. It was very. It's insightful. And straight to the point. One key point for me from the talk was um, building capacity is fundamental for me to lead in our 
in our world today and capacity building should um, should not be trivialized you see so you see people they call themselves leaders and they want to lead but they don't have this capacity and in the end um uh, in the end they 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 don't achieve their goals as as leaders so we'll be going to the section of um, for questions um i believe we have some of us have one or two questions will be giving us the privilege to have questions so that uh, Mr. Koejo will give um, uh, answers to those questions. So if you have questions, you can just uh, notify so that you, oh, your mic will be turned on to ask I can see one hand. We just want to give like three people questions. Remember, I said time bound. So we just want to give three people. So I don't know. Two more persons. If we have any questions, don't see me. So I can see. Um, yeah, John, John Motola. So I. Okay. Um, can can the co-host please uh, unmute John Motola's mic to to act? Okay, okay. Thank you very much. I've been amazing. Um, I don't know if you can hear me. Can can you all hear me? Hello, Julia. Yeah, we can hear you loud and clear. Yes, we can hear you, John. Okay, all right. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kwejo, for the wonderful presentation, the speech, and everything. It's been awesome and very, very impactful. But um, I just want to ask a question, or let me see, I want to get more clarity on technical and digital skill. What actually a clear difference between a technical skill and a digital skill. I used to think they are maybe the same, similar or interrelated or something like that. But I want to really get what the clear difference between a technical skill and a digital skill. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. Yeah. So you have the floor, sir. All right, uh, please do me a favor. John, can you just repeat the question again? Apologies, so I can hear you clearly. Okay, sir. Um, so I was asking that what's the clear difference between a technical skill and a digital skill? I used to think they are similar or the same or interrelated, but it seems they are, they are different. So what's actually the clear difference between a digital and a technical skill? Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. So if you are a techie, your technical skill and, and your digital skills are almost the same thing. But if you are not a techie, then there's a difference. Okay, so let me explain. Um, so I am a salesperson and I know how to sell a product properly, right? I can talk to people and I can sell, you know, 30 products in a week. And now discover that, oh, if I, if I master a digital skill called digital marketing, I can actually master that skill and reach out to you know, 300 people every week instead of just selling 30, 30 brands every, I mean, uh, 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 30 every, every, every week. So my data skills that I'm trying to acquire will boost my traditional or technical skill capability to be able to sell more and do more. Then also, I'm a salesperson. I sell 30 products every week. I can only sell to people that I can see. But if I, if I lash on data skills, I'll be able to sell to people that are far beyond my geographical location. And with logistics, I can reach them. So I now begin to go for classes in data marketing. I now begin to learn how to create I use pictures and videos to sell my ads. I know how to, I now know how to, I now know how to do SEO, uh, search engine optimization, 
And before you know, I that I'm traditionally a salesperson, fuse in my data marketing skills, begin to engage online. Before you know, I'm an established data marketer. I'm selling more, making more, and doing more. So by so doing, my, tech, my, my, my technical skill, which is sales, my data skills have helped to boost it. So like I said, if you're not, if you're not, if you're, if you're in tech, then most times your technical skills uh, uh, can be synonymous to, to the, your, your digital skills. But also, it could also vary. Some tech bro or tech ladies, they are just tech, tech, tech. But there's a social side of tech as well. For instance, all you can do is to write beautiful codes and nobody knows about you apart from your employer. But if you can, if you can see how to put your profile properly on LinkedIn, that's a form of social media skills. If you can tweak your social media skills a little, because a lot of tech people are not, are not social media inclined because they feel social media wastes their time. But social media for professionals, that's LinkedIn, for instance, is a gold mine. If you curate your works together, after everything you do, you do a LinkedIn post. Oh, we just finished the integration for a, a sub-Saharan a, a sub uh, tech company, you know, that has 500,000, you know, customers and does, you know, a $15 trillion transaction. In, I mean, just saying that. And you put on LinkedIn and you tag, you know, different tags. People in various sectors begin to look out for you and say, ah, oh, this guy does this, this guy did this. Before you know, people, people begin to chat to you and say, oh, hi, John, can you can you come over to our company? You know, we're, they're, they're paying you, you know, 200,000 Naira here. We're going to be paying you $20,000, you know. That's another leverage. So you have built a technical skill in coding, but you are using your social media, you know, professional, you know, uh, networking skill to boost and give you, you know, edge in, in, in the marketplace for greener and brighter opportunities. So that's how tech people can leverage it. So I give you an, an example of how tech can, can leverage uh, yeah, the, the, the technical and digital, digital skills and how a traditional non-tech person can also do the same as well. So John, is that clear? Yeah, very, very clear. Thank you so much for the clarity. Thank you very much, John. All right, sir. Yeah, thank you very much, sir, yeah, for the insights. So I don't know if the if there is any other question, if there's any other question, those signify to so give it the floor to us a question. Yeah. Rising to lead, building capacity for leadership. Do you have any other question? Do you have any question among us? I have talk. <clears throat> Our speaker is, is, is really able to, to grant clarity and further insight to any doubts you have. That talk we have this this morning. No question. Yeah, since perfect. Yeah. So um we've come to the closing part of um, our series for this month of um, month of February. It's the first we're having for this year, 2023. And uh, yeah, we appreciate our convener and our speaker for today, Mr. Koi Joluwatosin. Uh, for his expository and teaching regarding rising to lead, building capacity for leadership in today's world. As I said, um, building capacity is very, very, very important in today's world. I remember we are in, we are in a global village, we are in a global and global. We have the the world at our feet, permit me, can see and hand, okay, yeah, I can see and hand, Mr. I can see a hand, raise, I can see some raise, let me unmute your mic so that you can ask a question, yeah. All right, okay. um, it's a beautiful morning, um, uh, my name is Raymond, okay, um, mm -hmm. my question goes those, and um, um, first of all, um, my mentor and my leader, Pastor K, Gracias. You, we, I was blessed by your word. But um, I asked this question. The Bible says, "Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing, and hearing of the word of God." Is there any way? I know this stuff is recorded. I know this stuff is recorded, and um, you know, for study sake, 
he said so much, you know, that, um, you know, a quick glance of what we've listened might not do justice to it. I was writing, writing, writing. He was speaking, speaking, speaking. You know, at a time, you know, you need to also pause to understand what he's trying, the point he's trying to go. So can we have, after the program, the video of this um, for our personal consumption and study so that we can actually live in this light and, um, you know, move to the next level. If that is okay, I'll be so happy. The number two for our, okay. I think that's, that's okay for the now. Um, All right, maybe, Thank Am you, I also baby. free to? Yes. Go ahead, you want to say something? Yes, um, I don't know if um, this, um, the platform here will be right. Um, I would also like um, some of our, the, after the video is given to us for consumption, um, you said some things that um, um, they are very rare. It has to be said to people very close. Um, we need to, we need to, this is, we need to cherish this. But first of all, before we cherish it and push it to the outside world, we that, you know, was around, I think about 20 something of us, uh, precisely 21 of us, I think we need to have this material. We need to relieve this material before the next edition. We need to study this content exactly the way you said it, because it's what has gone into you over and over that you will start relieving with time. Um, I must right. appreciate the grace of God upon you. Thank you very thank much. You so, yes, thank you so much, um, um, uh, Raymond. So first and foremost, I see that um, uh, this has been recorded. Um, and it's also streamed to YouTube live. So after this uh, study, please, uh, after this session rather, the links will be available immediately. I can also see that the admin has already put a, a feedback form. So please fill the feedback form, put in your email, and I'm sure before the end of today or tomorrow, the links on YouTube will be available for you to go and watch. Um, admin, am I correct? Uh, Modrita, am I correct? Yes, sir, you are, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. So I think that answered your question. And um, once again, thank you very much. Over to you, Julius. Yeah, thank you very much, sir. Just to emphasize again, we have um, a feedback form. As um, Mr. Koyja has pointed out, we have a feedback form in the chat. We sincerely appreciate you, Felix. So that... Um, we will get your uh, get insight from you regarding our, our comfort series for the month of February and improve on on it where uh, need be where improvements are needed so that will serve provide a better edition in the next comfort series. As regarding the next comfort series, the next comfort series will be coming in the month of March. The the dates will be will be communicated to us please that's why it's important first, first, first saturday in march okay the first saturday in march oh, perfect yes yeah. Co that's exactly. still the fourth fourth of march yes fourth of march yeah exactly yeah the fourth of march um the first saturday in march that is the fourth of march 2023 we'll be having a comfort series for the month of march the second for the year so um we sincerely appreciate we come we attend. I believe today's section was impactful, and it's worth attending again. And the most important thing is um, not just we learning, as the Bible says, we should not just be hearers only. We should be hearers and be doers of the word. So what we are learning is important to take it into action. And I trust that when we um, when we take it into action, yeah. Great to be our reward, and God will bless the work of our hands. I see someone in the chat uh, asking if, if the next Confab series will be held on Zoom. Yes, of course, to be end on Zoom. The link will be properly communicated. Uh, um, the link for the Zoom meeting will be properly communicated when the time comes. Yeah, and it also will be live on YouTube. As we said, this section is currently is, is broadcasted live on YouTube. And the link will be provided at the end of the section on the latest by tomorrow or Monday 
we should we should we should get the link to your email so just please okay um yeah our course has even shared the link in the chat so you can just copy the link and take your time again to go through it 